Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about how to construct power series for a given function. The first thing we're going to look at is just to remind ourselves of the pattern that a geometric series follows. So anything of the form n equals 0 to infinity, a times r to the n is going to be a geometric series which converges when the absolute value of r is less than 1. And in that case, it converges to a over 1 minus r. So we're going to look at this function f of x equals 1 over 1 minus x. And we're going to compare it to a over 1 minus r. So if a function equals 1 over 1 minus x, notice that fits the pattern if a is 1 and r is x. So what we could say is that this 1 over 1 minus x expression is actually the sum of a convergent power series of the form n equals 0 to infinity of a, which is 1, times r to the n, which would be x to the n. Or in other words, just the sum n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n. Provided, of course, that the absolute value of r, which in this case is the absolute value of x, is less than 1. So what that means is that when the absolute value of x is less than 1, this series converges to 1 over 1 minus x. In other words, if we're talking about the um, radius of convergence of this power series, it's 1. And the interval, this is a power series which has a center at 0 since nothing is being subtracted or added to x here. So our center is 0, a radius is 1, x is between negative 1 and 1. So our uh, interval of convergence is negative 1 to 1. So this function f of x is equal to this power series on the interval from negative 1 to 1. Let's suppose that we wanted to obtain a power series for the same function but centered at negative 1. So let's consider the function once again, f of x equals 1 over 1 minus x. And let's say that we wanted to obtain a power series centered at 1. So we want this equal to a power series centered at actually negative 1. Okay? So remember what we need is to make it match up with a over 1 minus r. But in this case, in order for us to have a center at negative 1, we need 1 being added to x. So instead of r being equal to x, r would need to be x plus 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, OK, how can I change 1 over 1 minus x, rearrange it algebraically, so that it's equal to 1 over 1 or not one, but something, we're not sure what, minus, and then we were gonna have our x plus one be our r this time. Again, our goal here is to have this x plus one expression show up in our power series so we know the center is negative one. All right, so what can we subtract? Well, if you distribute this negative, we're gonna get negative x minus one. So we want something where if we subtract that number minus one, we get the one we started with. So Let's just use 2. 2 minus x plus 1 would, in fact, equal 1 minus x. So what that tells us, um, that, that would be helpful, except this 2 here, we need this to be a 1 in order to fit the pattern of a over 1 minus r. So I'm just going to multiply by a half in the numerator and denominator. So we'll get 1 half over 1 minus and x plus 1 over 2. Okay, so now it fits the pattern of a, this would be our a, 1 half, <clears throat> over 1 minus, and then x plus 1 over 2 would be our r. So that expression, 1 half over 1 minus x plus 1 over 2, that is going to be equal to the power series n equals 0 to infinity of a times r to the n. And remember, in this case, we didn't end up exactly with x plus 1. That's what we wanted. We actually ended up with a multiple of this, and that's okay. We can work with that, a constant multiple. It was multiplied by 1 half. So what we're going to do is we're going to have 1 half for our a, and then for our r to the n, we are going to have x plus 1 over 2 to the n. All right, so you can see that this is a power series centered at negative 1. 
because remember a power series just has to fit the format of a sub n times x minus c to the n. And so let's rearrange this a little bit to see that it fits this pattern for a power series. We have the sum n equals zero to infinity. Um, this is gonna be one half times one over two to the n times x plus one to the n. Or another way of writing this would be the sum n equals zero to infinity of one over two to the n plus one x plus one to the n. All right, now what is the interval of convergence for this? Um, another way of saying that is where does this power series actually equal the original function? So that's gonna happen again. Remember this is our a and this is our r to the n. We need for a geometric series to converge, we need the ratio to be less than one, r to be absolute value of r to be less than one. In this case, r was x plus one over two. We need that absolute value to be less than one. But that's just the same as saying the absolute value of x plus one has to be less than two. So we're, this gives us our radius of convergence, r. We know our center is at negative one. So we're going to be everywhere from two less than negative one, which is negative three, all the way up to two more than negative one, which is one. So our interval of convergence is negative three to one. And you'd get that same result if you solve this absolute value inequality. So what we've done is we've taken this function, f of x equals one over one minus x, we wrote it as this power series, and we determined that that power series has this interval of convergence. Let's look at some more examples of finding a geometric power series for a function f of x centered at a value c. Part A, suppose that f of x is equal to two over six minus x, and let's suppose that we want our power series centered at c equals negative two. Remember, what we need is something of the form a over one minus r, where r, in order to be centered at c equals negative two, r would need to be um, x minus negative two or x plus two or some multiple of that, constant multiple of that. So um, we're gonna take the two over six minus x and we're just gonna play with it a little bit. We are going to try to get this in the form of two over something minus x plus two. So you can see that if we subtract x, we get the negative x. Whatever number's here and where the question mark is, we're gonna subtract two from it and get six, so that must be eight. So we're gonna use two over eight minus x plus two. Okay, we haven't changed any values. Um, this gives us the x plus two, but we need a one here. So let's go ahead and multiply everything by an eighth this time numerator and denominators, we haven't changed anything, so we have one-fourth over one minus, and then x plus two over eight. All right, so this is in the form that we can work with. This fits the a over one minus r form. In this case, we have a being one-fourth, and we have r being x plus two over eight. So we can construct our geometric series, which is in the form a times r to the n, n equals zero to infinity. That's gonna be equivalent to our original function two over six minus x. So that's gonna be the sum n equals zero to infinity. And then we're gonna have uh, a is one fourth. And then that's being multiplied by x plus two over eight. All raised to the n power. All right, now again, in order for this to fit the pattern of a power series, remember power series look like a sub n times x minus c to the n. So I wanna get this looking more like that. Remember four is actually two squared, so thinking of this as two squared, and eight is actually two cubed. So as far as thinking of it as a power series, uh, 
pull this two cubed out, this being raised to the n power, and you're going to have the sum n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the 3n plus 2, right? 3 to the uh, 2 to the third to the n is 2 to the 3n, and we're, we're multiplying it times 2 squared, so we add 2. And then we're going to have x plus 2 to the n. So this definitely fits um, a power series pattern here. Now let's talk about where it converges. So in order for it to converge, we need the x plus 2 over 8 part, the r, to be less than 1, or rather its absolute value to be less than 1. Okay, which means the same thing as saying the absolute value of x plus 2 is less than 8. So um, we see here our center is negative 2, our radius is 8. That means that we're going to go all the way from negative 10 up to positive 6. Oh, excuse me. Yes, no, that's right. <laughs> okay, so our original function 2 over 6 minus x is equal to this power series on its interval of convergence from negative 10 to 6. Part B, let's look at the function f of x equals 1 over 1 minus 3x if we want the center to be 0. So when the center is 0, that's nice because we can just have our radius be x or some multiple of x. And um, in this case, um, so in other words, in order to get the format a over 1 minus r, all we have to do is um, match it up with 1 over 1 minus 3x. And we already have the pattern where r is equal to 3x satisfied and a is equal to 1. So this means that f of x equals 1 over 1 minus 3x could be written in the format of a, which is 1, so I don't need to write it, times r to the n, so 3x to the n, where n equals 0 to infinity. And this thing is going to converge wherever the absolute value of 3x is less than 1. So dividing by 3 then, that would mean the absolute value of x has to be less than a third, or in other words, the interval from negative one-third to one-third is the interval of convergence. So this concludes part one of the video on um, constructing power series, uh, specifically using geometric series um, for particular functions. And in the next video, we're going to talk about how to expand that to some other more complicated functions by using certain operations on power series. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to like it. That will help other students find the video.